There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am, outdoors. I've never filmed, I uh, did a five minute video once in this location. This is a picnic bench on private property. I think it belongs to the golf club, not golf club. Yeah, yeah, golf club. I, think. I don't think it's a golf club. It's some kind of, something like a golf club. I don't know what it is, but uh, it's near my, really close to my house. It's the closest place I could make an outdoor video. And there's a little bit of foliage if I get out of the way of it and it's the best I can do because it's gonna get really hot today I decided to see if anybody scolds me for making a video out here this is my TBR for a brand new booktube readathon that I'm really excited about it's called booktube at war and I believe the creator was Michael Vaughn and there's about 700 co-hosts I think I've got the full list here another bibliophile reads book time with Elvis criminali Steve Donahue Sean Stanfast and Unlimited Reads. So it's a, a really humongous topic, so I think that we probably need all those co-hosts to shepherd us through it. I think war literature is fascinating, important, and I don't understand why people don't read it all the time, because war is um, such an important aspect of our humanity, or our, our inhumanity, and I have uh, umpteen books Umpteen novels. You can do fiction or nonfiction, but I, I'm only doing fiction, of course. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Nonfiction is just, you know, I get that from Twitter. But <laughs> I guess it seems more important now because really, I mean, war is usually stupid, but I'm now at this late stage of my life, and I'm not 80, but <laughs> at this, as I move into the late middle age, I'm now living in an era where there is a just war, and that is the Ukrainian defense of their na nation against Russian uh, villainy. And it's kind of shifted my perspective on war. War is sometimes necessary, and I'm becoming a bit more hawkish. For example, I think Canada should quadruple its military budget, spend $2 a year on the military <laughs> instead of 25 cents. Does that math work out? Anyway. But usually, whether it's Vietnam or Iraq or um, World War I, most of the wars that happen are needless and uh, crimes against humanity. But there are some just wars. I am a big supporter of the Ukrainian defense of their homeland, for example. There's my little get off my soapbox. And because war novels don't really fit into most other readathons. I've got a whole bunch languishing on my shelf. I'm delighted for the chance to get to them in July. Now, if you don't know, my approach to readathons is really loosey-goosey in that I like to start a bunch of books during the duration of the readathon, but invariably I finish most of them weeks, if not months later. So with that in mind, here is my ambitious TBR. I'm just going to pull them out randomly. It's finally time for me to go back and read another Anna Burns novel. And this is No Bones by Anna Burns. And I can't remember if this is her debut or her second novel. I'll figure that all out once I get started. And I read her Milkman a few years ago. Just devastated. To, uh, just bowled me over. One of the best novels I've ever read. And this is one of her earlier novels. And it is set in the time of the Troubles. The tragic comic fortunes of the Lovett family of Belfast. Let's see, when was it published? 2001, so I'm going to guess it might be her debut. It's either her first or second novel. I've got some books that I've dying, been dying to read forever. Here is a Czechoslovakian novel. Mendelssohn is on the Roof by Jiri Vile. I believe it's pronounced Vile and translated from the Czech by Marie Wynn. The title is what sucked me into it and made me track it down. During the Nazi occupation of, the, of Czechoslovakia, an SS officer is ordered to remove the statue of the Jewish composer Mendelssohn and plot ensues. So that's all they need to know about that. My edition is 2011. I think the translation was first published in 1992 and the original in the Czech version was 1960. This one I get to double up a bit. I am a occasional uh, member of the Furled Middlebrow Book Club over on Litzy that my friend Leah, and perhaps others, but my friend Leah is uh, running. And I have a 
checkered relationship, not with Leah, but with um, Four Old Middle Brow books. I bail on a lot of them, and, and some of them are my absolute favorites. Fingers crossed for this one. This is their pick for July, and it is set in the final months of World War II. If you don't know Four Old Middle Brow, they reprint women's fiction from the 30s, 40s, 50s, basically especially UK, and uh, maybe exclusively UK, I, I have to think about that. So this one is Miss Carter and the Ifrit by Susan Alice Kirby, and it's set in the final months of World War II, and a spinsterish character in her late 40s has a drab job in the censorship office. Well, that sounds right up my alley. But... And the author, who was born in Cairo, I presume because of colonial stuff, lived in Canada for uh, 20 years or something and divorced her Canadian husband. But I think this one might have some kind of... Uh, uh, the Ifrit is a genie, so it's got a little bit of a supernatural thing. I'm not sure how I'll get along with that, but I'll give it, a, give it my best shot. It was originally published in 1945. Um, I'm going to pull off some that I don't have physically, so to make sure to get those in. A Japanese novel by a female writer that I'd never heard of. The title is Grass for My Pillow by Saichi Maruya. Translated from the Japanese by Dennis Keen. Uh, there's a copy at the University Library that I'll go pick up in the next few days. Originally published in Japanese in 1966. I'm not sure when the translation was published. But it is about resistance to the draft in the Pacific War or World War II in Japan. Uh, maybe one of the only works of Japanese fiction that addresses that. And in fact, in terms of non-graphic Japanese literature, like not, not, the, not graphic memoirs or graphic novels, but just the regular kind of novels, there's very little that's been published, or at least translated, into English about the war. And this was one of the few that I found, and it's about kind of dra draft dodgers, or dr resistance to the draft in World War II. Well, that sounds fascinating. Here is a chunky book that's been on my shelf. I brought all the way from Tokyo in the mail, paid, so kind of paid for this book twice, and it's a classic war novel from Finland, Unknown Soldiers by Vaino Linna, and it was translated from the Finnish by Liesl Yamaguchi, set in World War II. It's about the war. I, I think that I, I don't have any more details about it in my head, but I Hope to get lots of more details about it in my head once I start reading it. This edition is 2015, and the original Finnish edition was 1954. I have heard nothing but praise for this 2023 release, The World and All That It Holds by Alexander Heman. Heman? Heman? I think it's Heman. At the post-production phase, I actually checked. It's Alexander Heyman. And this is published in English, and it is set in World War One, and I believe the opening is the assassination of Archdirk, Archdirk, Archduke Ferdinand, and it's a gay, I think there's a gay couple at the heart of it, I think it, I think I know that, don't I? Yes. And it's about two soldiers, I'm not sure what countries they come from, but somewhere in Europe, and they fall in love and plot ensues, and apparently it's just a stunning work of literary fiction. I cannot wait to get to it, and this was going to be a buddy read with Joe Smith. And I'm embarrassed that I don't have uh, the precise information in my head. It used to be in my head, it's gone, but this is the um, Afri British, African British, British African novelist that won the Nobel a couple years ago. Abdul Razak Gurna's most recent novel, Afterlives, which I've been dying to read. I had to, bought it before he won the Nobel, and I have previewed the first chapter during the concussion reading project with Lindy all those years ago, and this will be a pseudo-buddy read with Tilly of Tilly Shelf. I've forgotten the specific details about him because he comes from a, a country in Africa, but he actually came from a territory that no longer exists, and I have blanked on what country that's in now, but when he left Africa, it was this colonial territory that doesn't exist, and uh, I've forgotten. This just sounds fascinating. The protagonist was uh, stolen from his parents by the German colonial troops and comes of age in the army. It's all the colonial wars and stuff that ensue. And I remember loving the first 10 pages of the first chapter or whatever it was that I read to Lindy. The one audiobook that I will do for War on Booktube 
is Matterhorn by Carl Marlantes. Is that pronounced right? Marlantes? He is a Vietnam War veteran, and this is a novel about the actual war. I mean, it's it's a Vietnam War novel. It's supposed to be just wonderful. A 21-hour audiobook, and I think the first time I ever heard about this was from Libby... If I'm remembering her name right, Libby Hardy. Close, but definitely no cigar. Liberty Hardy, for goodness sakes. Of Book Riot, talked about it on all the books podcasts, and it's been on my TBR ever since. Here is a novel by a German writer, and I believe he's of Kurdish background. Certainly the novel is set in the Kurdish Iraq, the Kurdish um, part of Iraq, and it is called The Dark Ship by Shirko Feta translated from the German by Martin Chalmers. But it is about a young Kurdish boy growing up in Saddam Hussein's Iraq. He's a young Kurdish boy. And it's about terrorism, and I believe it extends to at least one of the Iraq wars. And so it's maybe a little bit adjacent to the topic, but I, I don't I think any book that has terrorism and shows the life of a of a kid growing up in a war-torn land qualifies, and I read the first 10 pages of this to Lindy for the concussion reading project, and we both were quite impressed with it. So it's time to read the darn book. Uh, Shirkofada was born in East Berlin and then moved to the West, which I assume is West Germany, and then it's all one big country now, isn't it? And the last one I'm going to pick up from the library and this is a historical novel going back to the War of the Roses, Cecily by Annie Garthwaite. came out just a couple years, a year or two ago. I have a bite-sized book chat with Louise, and I'll put that link in the show notes. That She totally sold me on it. The main character is Cecily, and I believe she ends up becoming a key player in the War of the Roses, but I can't remember any of the details. I'll find out when I start to read it. It's a book that has gotten, you know, not a lot of attention, but mostly rave reviews, so... That I'm also planning to start during the month of War on Booktube. I've read so many fantastic novels that were in a war setting. I'm going to try to make time to do a recommended recommendations video. And that's my TBR. Can't wait to see yours. Thanks for watching. <laughs>